Yeah, and the thing that kind of got us into the tax credit game is we were helping clients with a lot of financial strategy and doing a lot of things for them, but everybody kept saying, I'm paying too much in taxes, I'm paying too much in taxes. So we started looking around. And what we discovered was for a lot of our clients, and we work with a lot of auto shops and also a lot of doctors and dentists. So I guess we just work with people who fix things. But the research and development credit, which is, I think a lot of people have like heard about it somewhere, somehow. People don't realize that it applies to small businesses, not just big businesses. And there's a good reason for that. Welcome to the Mind Wrench Podcast with your host, Rick Sellover, where minor adjustments produce major improvements in mindset, personal growth, and success. This is the place to be every Monday, where we make small improvements and take positive actions in our business and personal lives that will make a major impact in our success, next level growth, and quality of life. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mind Wrench Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Silver. Thanks so much for stopping in. If you're a returning listener and haven't done so already, please take a minute and click the follow or subscribe button and then rate and review the show. When you rate and review the show, the algorithms for Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and all the other platforms will see that it's valuable and show it to more people that have never seen it before. And hopefully it can help them too. I would really, really, really appreciate your help sharing this word with your friends and family as well. And if you're a brand new listener, welcome. I hope you find something of value here that helps you in your personal or professional life as well. Please make sure to click the subscribe or follow button so you never miss another episode. Okay, this one's for all you shop owners out there. Would you be interested in hearing about a little known tax break that could significantly reduce your business tax just for doing the right thing and improving your repair process? Yes? Yeah, that's what I thought. In fact, you may have already earned some tax breaks you can still claim. This week's guest is a well-seasoned financial professional, a wealth strategist that has helped thousands of business owners by demystifying money and financial strategy to allow them to live their biggest life. And he wants to share with you the hidden tax advantages that used to be exclusively just for OE manufacturers. I'm very excited and honored to have this financial expert that speaks the plain truth in blue-collar lingo. He has a diverse background in marketing, real estate, wealth and financial strategy, and coaching. Derek Van Ness is the founder and CEO of Big Life Financial and is my special guest this week. So let's get right to that interview. Uh, This week, uh, I got a very special guest, Derek Van Ness from Big Life Financial uh, is joining us and he's going to kind of clue us in on some some neat things in uh, in the financial and tax worlds out there that we may not know about. Derek is the CEO and founder of Big Life Financial, and it's a financial wealth management company. Uh, but he's got a great background that uh, you know goes through um, real estate and marketing and wealth strategy. He even spent some time in coaching, right? I sure did. Excellent. Well, Derek, welcome to the show. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time, and, and you know, a special shout out to your friend Heather, who uh, persisted that I connect with you, right? <laughs> So quick, funny, you know, piece of my business is, uh, you know, being a podcast host, I get a lot of people reach out and it's usually marketers, right? And they're looking mm-hmm. for, you know, trying to sell me something on uh, you know, how to promote my podcast or, you know, I need this or I need that. And I do get some people that reach out uh, looking to be guests uh, on the show, but a lot of it is scam stuff. It really is. So I, I shy <laughs> away from it. And, and she approached me several times uh, through Facebook and LinkedIn and, sent me an email and uh once i talked to her and you know i got an idea who you were i was like oh yeah i gotta have this guy on the show so uh glad we got this connected and uh, glad you're here today so without any, further, without any further ado uh, let's jump right in so if you could give us just a uh, a brief background of how you got from where you started into running your own financial company all right. Well, it's a it's a long story, and and you know I just really appreciate you having me on, Rick. Love working with you know with shop owners and small business owners. So this is really fun for me. You know, my background. I went to business school, got out of business, uh, and I knew at some point I wanted to own my own company. And a lot of people listening can probably relate with that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also, if I'm honest with you, I was a little bit scared of selling things and talking to people 
like I was good one on one, but like over the phone or professionally wasn't really my thing. So I took a sales job and it happened to be with an equipment finance company. Well, most shop owners probably know about those, right? Like they're high interest kind of tricky loans. And but it taught me a lot and and, uh, made me realize that I really loved teaching and helping people with financial stuff, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, and I did that for a while and it was really good because basically the interview for that job was, can you make 200 cold calls a day? And if you didn't flinch when they said that they would hire you. (laughs) Right. So it was like, it would scare a lot of people away right there. So. Yeah. They literally were like, we have a, we have a call counter, like it's hooked up as software. We post the numbers at noon at three and at five. If you haven't hit your number at five, you're fired. Like wow. you just, yeah, it was pretty hardcore. And I thought this is the scariest thing ever for me and also exactly what I need. So I ran toward it and it was tough, but I learned so much about that. And that kind of got me started in the financial world and, and working with business owners. And then, you know, that kind of grind wore me down. So I became a, a real estate investor. This was long before like house flipping was a thing. I thought of it as, buy a house, fix it up and sell it. Uh, there wasn't like a name for it back then. This was uh, about 2001 and started doing that and got really good at that. Built a business around it. We were doing 25 to 30 a year for many years. Oh. And then 08 came. I was in Southern California. I had 16 flips going and uh, managed to get hit while snowboarding uh, by, by a snowmobile and broke my femur. So I was laying in bed, chewing on Vicodin as the market crashed with 16 houses with hard money on them. You you could only imagine how fun that was. Uh, That was another huge financial lesson and learned a lot of lessons about what not to do and what was really important in my life. Um, And then from there, a friend of mine who happens to be kind of a financial guru hired me and he said, hey, you've got the financial background. You've got the you know, the different strategies, you've been a business owner, so you know what that perspective's like. I'd really love to hire you to coach business owners. We teach all these financial and tax strategies. And so I went to work with them, coaching business owners on a bunch of financial strategies, tax strategies, mindset, purpose, you know, really the whole thing. And uh, worked with about 1500 business owners over the next seven years, right? And that got me to about 2016, which is when I started my firm, Big Life Financial. And primarily that was because as a coach for someone else's business, you can only go so far. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said to yourself, how come I'm not further along than this? Or why can't I ever seem to get ahead? Are you frustrated with life, unsure of your future, wanting to make a change in your current situation, but too scared to make that next move? Maybe you want to reach that next level in life or in your business, but not sure what the right move is. Or maybe you feel the best thing to do is nothing at all. Many of you may not know, but along with hosting my own weekly podcast, I'm a personal development, mindset, business, and life coach, where I focus on helping people with self-development, mindset, and how to make positive changes in their lives. And trust me, with all the negativity we've had to deal with these past two years, I think we all need some positivity, a positive change, and a fresh approach to our life or our business in 2022. Sometimes talking to the right person can make all the difference. If you really want to start making those changes in your life, take action right now. Reach out and email, text, call, or direct message me as soon as possible. Do it right now. I'll set you up with a free consultation call and pre-qualify you for either the one-on-one or business coaching that you really need to get your life or your business on the right track to success. Appointments are available right now. Right. And there were some things I wanted to be able to do with clients, but uh, I just couldn't do it because it wasn't my business. So we we parted ways on good terms. We're still very close and uh, and started this business, really being able to help business owners be smarter with the money that they make, keep a lot more tax wise and really build a life that you love. My company's called Big Life Financial, not Big Money Financial, right? Because because the game we're playing here is quality of life. If you have more money, but your life sucks, that's not a good trade. We want to make sure. No, it's sure. not. And, yeah. and actually in this in this uh, sector of the business that I deal with, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of really successful shop owners out there that have multiple shops, but they're miserable inside. 
just because they haven't gone through the things uh, mindset wise that they've needed to. They've had those hard life lessons like you have. They've been kicked in the crotch multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, but you really have to go, you got to go internal and fix fix what's going on between the, the ears. And it makes all the other things uh, so much better. So that's why I thought you'd be a great guest for today because I know you have that history and that uh, and that background of, of going through those life lessons uh, that were very difficult. And it pushed the desire for you to be out there helping somebody else, which is awesome. Yeah, really, I was kind of lucky. The whole meltdown in real estate forced me to have to reevaluate my life. Because when you've when you've built a successful business, you can get trapped in it, right? I'm making good money. I'm doing this thing. But honestly, we systematized everything. I was just bored. I didn't right. even like, I didn't even have to show up and the business worked, which was great, except that I was bored and everybody else had to work. So I was trying to figure out what to do with my life. And then, of course, the whole thing burns down, which is probably karma, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> but I had to rebuild my life and say, what do I actually want? What's important to me? And that was not an easy process at the time. So I would urge if anybody's feeling trapped, like you're talking about, like do the reevaluation, just don't burn your business down to do it. Right. Yeah, you can, you can, you can grow <laughs> on the outside while you're still doing stuff on the inside. So uh, yeah. it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but uh, it's good that you did dive in, you opened your own place up. And so now you're, you're helping uh, people on, from the financial standpoint, uh, but it's not about, you know, them making millions of dollars. It's not big business. It's more quality of life stuff, which is huge. And that's uh, that's a great segue for for having you out here today. There's a lot of things. We, we had a discussion earlier. We had a little discovery call. And, and mm-hmm. you mentioned some things that you're helping small business, including the automotive sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, some things they don't know about. And quite honestly, everybody's looking for a break everywhere they can find it. <laughs> Business, yeah. Right. So whether it's you know squeezing somebody for more discount or getting you know a piece of equipment for a better price or better financing, these shop owners, you know, the struggle's real. They're trying to gain wherever they can, but there's some things that are right under their nose they may not know about. Yeah. So um, what you know, two questions. So number one, what do you think the biggest financial mistake most uh, small business owners make? Uh, the probably the biggest one is. People seem to be one of two things. They either be seem to be focused on the top line, which is sales, 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 or they're focused mm-hmm. on the bottom line, which is profit, but they're really like pinching pennies on the expenses. But you really need to be both, right? How do we drive sales, bring in revenue, but then also how do we get really efficient? If you only have sell, 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 you have a real loosey-goosey organization, all this money runs through your through your hands and you know, slips through the cracks in the floor and somehow evaporates. Mm-hmm. If you go the other direction, you live in this world of like anxiety and penny pinching and fear and scarcity. And it's really frustrating and you can't ever get to where you want to go. We kind of help people to balance that. And and the big thing is get really good at your business and, and the expense a lot of people aren't seeing is taxes. Cause that's whether you realize it or not, even if you got a bunch of kids, Taxes are the biggest expense in your life, which is kind of crazy if you make Pretty money. Pretty scary, really. It, it is, because college is expensive, but taxes cost even more. Yeah, I don't know if that's a true stat, but it sure feels that way. So, uh, yeah. so that's the, bi- the big thing I see is people are, are paying attention to one or the other, and they're not really looking at the, the tax opportunities that are out there. Right. So you found in your, in your works that there is a little piece of uh, the tax code that uh, has been largely overlooked. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if anybody in uh, in my audience is, is going to know this. I hope a few of them do. But I know there's something that's uh, very beneficial. Now, I, I know that um, since COVID, there was this ERC thing, which was the Employee Retention Credit, yeah. uh, which, which still was not, you know, I talked to a lot of shops owners that, didn't really know about or didn't take advantage of just they thought it was too much work it really wasn't worth the hassle or they just didn't understand what it was yeah uh, and there's some people that took advantage of it and it ended up being you know quite a bit of money uh, yeah. that they could have missed out on so but there's something else out there too right there, there is so just to quickly touch on the ERC thing I mean 
people can get up to $26,000 per employee. So the money can really add up, right? If you've got five mm -hmm. guys in your shop that aren't related to you, because it doesn't, relatives don't count, that could be $125,000 coming back. If you've got 10 guys, double that. So it's definitely worth looking at if you had double W2 employees. And the big thing to understand there is you didn't have to have a decline in your revenue. In other words, your numbers didn't have to go down for you to qualify. If okay. you were really, if you were really impacted, like you had to follow mandates with, I know there's a ton of cleaning with shops, right? And social distancing and everything. If that had an impact on your efficiency or effectiveness of more than 10%, you can still qualify. So if somebody wants to talk about that and get into the nuance of their situation, just know the door is open and there, there are a bunch of, you know, anytime the government's doing some sort of giveaway, <laughs> there's a million guys out there. Okay. Uh, it's not our main thing, although we've done hundreds of them for clients. Um, okay. I'd be happy to talk with someone about it, but, but yeah, that's the one time thing. What you're and, and, and that door is still open, so people could still take advantage of that yet. Uh, yeah, how much, yeah, yeah. Derek, how much longer do they have to, uh, to, to do something with that? So the refund you can get for 2020 will expire next April 15th, so April 15th of 2024, okay. and the and but that's only five thousand per employee of the 21 or 26,000. So 21,000 of it is for 2021 and that expires the following year. So you have from the time of this recording, almost two years where you can file for something and you've got almost a year to be able to get that full $26,000 per employee if that's how your numbers work out. Okay, that's great. And that's good to know because I, I, I guarantee you that not every shop was aware that that's still, still available to them. So thanks for sharing that. So um, yeah. yeah. You found something else out though that was that I thought was really interesting. So uh, let's yeah. dive into that. Yeah, the thing that kind of got us into the tax credit game is we were helping clients with a lot of financial strategy and doing a lot of things for them, but everybody kept saying, "I'm paying too much in taxes. I'm paying too much in taxes." So we started looking around, and what we discovered was for a lot of our clients, and we work with a lot of auto shops and also a lot of doctors and dentists. So I guess we just work with people who fix things, right? Perfect, but, yeah. Yeah, for, for whatever reason. But the research and development credit, which is, I think a lot of people have like heard about it somewhere, somehow, you know, in reference somewhere, but people don't realize that it applies to small businesses, not just big businesses. And there's a good reason for that. The credits came out way back in the eighties, but they really were targeted at big businesses. But they worked so well, in fact, because you guys are you know, working with automobiles, actually it was the automotive industry that started or inspired Congress to create the research and development credits. It was so that American cars could compete with a lot of the Japanese cars coming mm -hmm. over in the 80s. Yeah. America up to that point had dominated the auto industry. And then right. all these Toyotas and Hondas and Datsun at the time came over and America was falling behind. And so Congress said, hey, we... We want to incentivize you guys to innovate, try new stuff, figure things out, take some chances. And if you do that, we'll, we'll reimburse it with some credits. And so that's really where they started. But uh, it was so effective that they made some rule changes. In 2001, they, made, they changed the rule. That you didn't have to invent something new to the world. It just had to be new to your business. So obviously shops are making changes and trying new stuff for their business all the time. Right. And, and it's not new to the world, but it's new to you. And then the second thing was they simplified the credit in 2007 and they made a version that was more applicable to small business owners. It's called the alternative simplified credit. But essentially what that did was it dumbed it down enough that now a small business could do it. You didn't have to have like all these crazy records and, everything marked out to the quarter of an hour and you know every penny accounted for it was a little more broad strokes you get a little lower reimbursement but you don't have to have all the record keeping to the same degree so that really opened up the door for shops and then this thing was getting re-ratified every year because it wasn't permanent it was kind of a, a temporary thing in 2015 they made it permanent and that's really what opened the door to shop owners being able to do this is is that it became permanent once it became a permanent part of the tax code people said oh we should be in this business it's going to be here next year up to that point nobody really wanted to be in that business because it could go away at any time so 
since 2015, the specialty groups have popped up who just do research and development credits. Your typical CPA doesn't because it's it's such a different thing. It's uh, it's all about the activities and the things you're doing in your shop, not so much about the numbers like like a typical uh, CPA would be working right. with. Not in their wheelhouse, so they're not going to bother with that, right? Yeah, yeah. So these guys got really good at it. We brought the cost down. So between the simplification and the lowering of the cost, it's it's really been available for the last seven or eight years. It took people a couple of years to figure it out, right? But I'd say for the last five years, it's been getting more and more prevalent. So, uh, and we've done hundreds of them for clients and, uh, and have really found that this is something you could file every single year. It'll save you in taxes and you can even go back and amend for the last three years. So for a lot of our clients, wow. the first time you do it, you get three years of tax credits. It's a pretty nice shot in the arm, depending on the business. Right. And so this is research and development. So we talked a little bit about this and I didn't realize what that it, what that really covers and how much of collision shop, you know, what they've had to go through the past, you know, let's say five to eight years, but more specifically, probably the past three or four years, there's been a ton of advancement, uh, massive advancement in the technology in today's vehicles. Uh, uh, when it comes to crash worthiness and uh, you know calibrations and scanning and uh, different uh, substrate part uh, substrate uh, materials and how to correctly repair them or weld them or whatever, this kind of applies to all that, doesn't it? It really does. So anything you're doing in your business that's adding new capability. So if you're bringing in new diagnostic equipment to improve profitability, efficiency. Uh, accuracy, that's going to be a project, is what the IRS thinks of it as, that you're trying something new, you're innovating, you haven't done it this way before, you're putting man hours and time into it, and they want to reimburse you for a small portion. I mean, this stuff isn't like over the top, but a right. small portion of every dollar you spend in that direction. Well, like you're saying, Rick, we've seen with all the changes with automobiles, the people who service that industry, Every year, there's a new piece of equipment. There's a new thing you have to figure out how to deal with. There's new regulations. Cars are changing. So you got to figure out, you know, how to deal with the, like you said, the structural and safety of that. So every time you come in and make a new change to your business in what you offer, in how you approach it, uh, with the intent of improving profitability or reducing waste or reducing costs or increasing efficiency, it's going to happen. And, you know, shop owners are doing one, two, three, four projects a year where they're going in and overhauling a system of their business or making things better to keep up with technology or get better market share. So all of those types of technology changes, process changes are going to likely qualify. One of the rules with the R&D credit is it has to be based in what they call hard science. And I say hard science in quotes. So they, they define that as biology, physical science, computer science, and engineering. So a ton of what you guys are doing is computer science and engineering related. I know for for the technology changes that they've made, just uh, adapting to how to repair vehicles, um, mm -hmm. you've got the whole EV um, push yeah. that's heavy yeah. coming from the manufacturers. And we're seeing them in all the shops now. And that is a totally different way of repairing a vehicle. It takes totally different equipment processes, mm -hmm. safety stuff. So all yeah. those things are, those would qualify. Uh, and this goes towards a reduction in taxes that the business is paying, right? Not their personal, but their business tax. Is that correct? Well, and so, yes. So really how it works with businesses is everything except for a C corporation. And just so you know, I'm not a CPA. Um, but we work with taxes a lot, right? And so check this with your CPA. That's my my disclosure, <laughs> right? Uh, double check this. But everything other than a C corporation, and most people don't have a C corp, the profits happen at the business level and the credits happen at the business level. They run through, you pay all your expenses, whatever the profit is at the bottom rolls through to you personally, and then you write the check personally for the taxes. So everything else is a pass-through entity. Mm -hmm. um, so same thing here, the credits happen on the business level, but they impact the amount of taxes you will pay personally, uh, dollar for dollar. It's not like 
$10,000 of credits isn't like a $10,000 write-off because if right. you're in a 25% tax bracket, that would only be worth $2,500, right? A $10,000 write-off. This is $10,000 you don't pay in taxes dollar for dollar. Wow. That's incredible. Do you see, uh, and now you've worked with in the automotive repair side, so you've got some clients mm -hmm. there. So you've yeah. seen them doing, have you seen much in the collision side where uh, customers are now uh, taking advantage of that uh, that tax break? Honestly, I haven't worked with a lot of collision shops. I think I have one or two automotive repair shops that also do collision, but I don't know if I've worked with any kind of collision only type of groups, but Oh, we'll fix much, that. Yeah, it sounds like it. Much <laughs> of the same ideas are are translated, right? The types of, like you said, just the industry's changed so much. There's always new technology. There's always new diagnostic equipment. There's always new calibrations. Uh, you guys deal with a bunch of probably structural issues and things that aren't quite as prevalent on the auto repair side. So I uh, I feel very confident that the same things are going to apply, but I'd be lying to to you if I said that we've done a bunch of auto um, collision shops because we just haven't yet. Right. Well, like I said, uh, and I think it's it could just be a, a lack of uh, awareness out there in the collision mm -hmm. world that that there is a tax break. I mean, they some of these guys have some very sharp CPAs and some very sharp sure. financial uh, guys and tax guys that work with them, but I'd say a, a larger percentage of shops do not. They have the same CPA they had 20 years ago Guy's in his late seventies, and he's his buddy of the family. And you know, I can't fire Bill. He's he's a great guy. You know, so people are you know they're creatures of habit, and and in the collision industry, it's not different from any other industries. We get somebody we're comfortable with, we stick with them. Maybe sure. they're not bringing everything to the table we'd like them to, but what we don't know doesn't hurt us, unless it's a tax break. Then that is hurting us, and we don't realize it. So yeah, well, and, and here's the reality, Rick. Most people's expectation of what a CPA does is, in my opinion, flawed. We most we think our CPA or our tax person is like the be all end all with taxes. But the truth is, most of them are tax recorders. You come to them and say, hey, we did this list of things this year. Uh, we bought this equipment. We, you know, we invested in these things or, or whatever. And they tell us how much we owe. But what CPAs generally don't do, or most tax pros don't do, is they don't tell you how to create or proactively go out and find strategies for you. And the reality is, for most of them, that's that's not really their job. That's where a tax strategist comes in, or a lot of times you get these kinds of things from your investment advisors, because there are ways to put money into investments and create tax breaks. Life insurance, you can do it. Donation strategies, entity structuring, that's not what CPAs do. And so people sometimes get frustrated, but it's a little bit like someone coming to you and, and you know, you're a collision, a collision guy. Uh, like if they came to you about something that is related to cars, like maybe interior leather, why didn't you tell me I could have this better interior leather? And you're like, well, we work with cars, but that's not really what we do. Right. Right. We do collision. Same kind of thing here where most CPAs don't do R and D. A lot of them didn't do ERC, and most of them don't do those other areas I was talking about that kind of create the tax breaks. Once you create the tax breaks, they'll record them for you, right? And they'll tell right. you how to classify them and how much you owe and all the benefits and, and drawbacks of that, but that's not what they do. So there is a big misnomer. CPAs, you know, people get frustrated with them for that, and it's not really their fault. It's not what they do, and most of them have many hundreds or thousands of clients, it's very difficult unless they've become a specialty firm for them to proactively come to you and say, here's what you need to do unless you want to pay a premium for it. There are groups that do that, um, but they, they cost a lot more money because they're creating additional value. They're putting a lot of extra time in and they're customizing a solution. A lot of these guys just record, turn and burn. I don't want that to come off wrong. It's just a lower price solution. And then clients get frustrated with that. So just for the, the sake of clarity, I don't want to like beat up on CPAs. It's just people are no. expecting them to do something that's not not their job. Right. No, that's why there's specialty divisions of every kind of business, because there is specific things people are looking for. Then there's generalists that, you know, an auto, auto mechanic shop could be a generalist type of a repair shop, but they don't do Ferraris or, or they don't yeah. do some specific brands. Right. So you got some specialized. So yeah, I think everybody understands that. I don't think any CPAs will 
well, they probably won't listen to this anyways, but <laughs> they probably wouldn't be terribly offended because we're, you know, you're right. We're not throwing, uh, throwing dirt on them right now. Um, but it's great that there's professionals like you that, that can point this out and help those uh, looking for the help. So this, uh, this R&D credit, um, I want to make sure I have this right and everybody hears it right. So this is what they call Section 41 of the tax code. Is that what they, if they wanted to do some research before they called and, and reached out to you, research R&D tax credit Section 41, right? That is correct. Yeah. And if you look at the tax code, it won't make any sense to you. But if you get the tax guidance, the memorandums, then, it, then it'll make a little bit more plain English sense. But yes, that is the section. And there's something called the four-part test that okay. really is the, the governing thing. Every dollar that you spend in your business that checks the four boxes for the four-part test will be eligible for reimbursement. And just for really quick sake, what those four boxes are is, are you looking to improve, I'm going to paraphrase here, a product or process? Sure. You guys do a process, right? So are you looking to make your process better? And I would argue most businesses are doing well with that. It'd be a yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second one is, uh, are you looking to, their languages, are you looking to reduce technological uncertainty? How we interpret that is, are you looking to get more consistent outcomes? When we do X, our intended outcome is Y, and that happens more often. So we're doing things to make that happen more often. Mm hmm and I would say most businesses are doing that, but where you lose a lot of businesses that could apply to, to you know, automobiles and collision is, uh, is it based in hard science? Like we said, biology, physical science, computer science, or engineering. Like my business, we do some quote unquote financial engineering and such, but I wouldn't call that really true engineering. So we probably right. wouldn't check that box. Um, in the collision world, you, you would though. Because uh, believe me, they, you got all that OEM uh, technology, uh, everything's spec'd, everything's been tested, everything's, you know, OEM repair procedures themselves are telling you hard science says this is how mm -hmm. you have to repair this vehicle, right? So yeah, it definitely yeah. checks that box. Yeah. And then the last one is, is there a process of experimentation? In other words, are you trying things that may or may not work the way you think? Every time you bring something new into your business, a new diagnostic machine or you do a new approach or you try different materials, different structural approaches, whatever, all of that is experimental, right? Sometimes you try it, it doesn't work. And they know that when you try new stuff, it doesn't always go well. And that's really mm -hmm. the spirit of the credits is when you try new stuff, you're going to lose some money somewhere. We want to encourage you to continue to do that. So we're going to give you a credit for some of that money. So those are the four boxes. Right. If, if people are checking those with their dollars, that's how you're going to going to qualify oh. if you just for a little more in the weeds of Section 41. Derek, that's freaking awesome, because I guarantee you that every collision shop will tick all four of those boxes. I mean, every every day they're trying something. I mean, it, they may not call it exper experimentation, but you try a new adhesive, you try uh, a new way of uh, repairing a, a metal panel, you try a new. Um, machine that you bought for pulling or for welding. I mean, there's a lot mm -hmm. of experimental just in every day trying to get the jobs done and get them out the door as safely and as correctly as possible. So I think that's fantastic uh, that that's out there. And now people will start to hear about that in this industry. Um, yeah. I would say they definitely need to reach out to Derek if you need more information. Uh, I know he can help you out. Do you have like a, uh, almost like a one sheet on uh, some of the qualifiers for this. I mean, if someone said, "Hey, can you can you just send me a little list of things I got to make sure I I'm, the boxes I got to hit and, and what qualifies me uh, or may not qualify me?" Is there something that like you already have built or? Yeah, well, we kind of do. We do a lot of it internally. Usually, what we do, Rick, is rather than having people try and self-diagnose, right, and guess, mm -hmm. we we usually do a phone call where we do uh, eventually we do a questionnaire or we'll go through that with you and have our CPA look at it. Because I'll be honest with you, I've been doing this a long time, but also there are things that I sometimes don't realize because listen, tax code's very interpretive, right? Open to interpretation. Yep. And there are things that our CPA team understands in the trenches and under the hood that even I miss. So usually what we do is, is we'll do a free estimate for a client so they can see okay, we did all these things. Maybe some of them don't qualify and we thought they did. Maybe some of them we didn't realize 
do qualify or qualify at a much higher level. Sometimes I get surprised, especially when we're doing a new industry at how, how potent it is. So I don't want people to say, oh, I don't do this or that. So I don't, right. I don't want to look at it. I think for everybody, it's worth a 15 minute conversation to see, I don't know, is this worth looking at? And then our team will do a, a free estimate for you. So you can say okay. at that point, okay, this is worth doing or no, you know what? It's not worth our time. It really isn't too time intensive. I would say in total, it's maybe an hour or two of the business owner, or if they hand it off to an office manager, somebody's time. So the pr- pretty non-invasive okay. can be can be quite lucrative, especially if you're a shop that's you know making these transitions, trying the new stuff like you're talking about. It's going to be mm-hmm. pretty effective for you. Oh, that's that's awesome, and that's and that's fair enough. You know, free estimate and. That way people will know if, uh, if they can go further with this or, or not. Is there a, a potential cap on what a customer uh, taxpayer can uh, claim or try to reduce their taxes by? Or once it hits zero, that's it, right? You can go all the way to zero? <laughs> yes. Well, you can go all the way to zero. So like, if you're not paying taxes right now because you've got a new, you know, a new business and you're reinvesting and you have all the write-offs in that first couple of years, Maybe you don't need to worry too much about it yet, but you can carry the credits forward. So if you, you know, ideally once you're paying, I would say seven to $10,000 in taxes, it's probably worth it to look at because now you've got a pretty good chunk you can get back. Plus you can carry the credits forward up to 20 years. So they do accumulate. Um, Yeah, there's some, some wonky things going on for 22 right now in the way that the credit not how you qualify, but the way that it's calculated. And um, they want to, right now, they just integrated something for 22 where you get the credits over five years instead of all in the first year. And that was something that happened in the 2017 tax rewrite. I'm only bringing this up so that people don't get caught off guard. But Congress realized it was a terrible idea because they've already introduced a new bill to retroactively get rid of that. So chances are really good you know, you'll be able to get that credit. But if it stays the way that it is, you can get the whole credit against however much you've paid in taxes this year. That's kind of the cap. Okay. Theoretically, you can carry it forward, though. Okay. No, that's great. Um, any limitations or pitfalls of, of approaching this? Uh, is it Can any shop size look at doing this, or is there some limitations there? Well, in theory, any shop can look at it, right? But once again, we're looking at it as a business owner, what's worth your time. I think if you've got a half a million dollars top line, right, in sales going through the shop, now you have enough dollars going through that this little percentage really adds up to something worth getting. So I would say if you have over a half a million dollars of, of sales, it's worth it. And if you're paying taxes, right, obviously if you're not paying much in tax, then then you probably want to wait until you are. Uh, we'd be happy to look at it anyway, but you know, if you've only got $150,000 worth of sales, there's probably not enough for it to really be worth your time yet. I would say work on building your business first and then come back in a year or two once you've kind of gotten over that hump. Okay. Um, any documentation or paperwork, uh, someone that's curious or interested in this uh, would need to have or need to uh, warehouse or hold or you know, gather, anything like that? Not, not too far outside of the uh, typical business operations. I mean, if somebody wants to, and we do encourage people as you try new things throughout the year, document that not heavily, but like, Hey, we looked into trying this new system. We researched a bunch of different machines uh, or diagnostics or different types of materials. You know, keeping track of that stuff can certainly allow us to be even more aggressive about it. Mm -hmm. But the documentation itself, because of that simplification I talked about is pretty minimal. So yeah, not a lot of documentation outside of the questionnaire we do, or we go through and we do document it for you as a client to make the process real simple. That whole thing only takes about an hour. So it's pretty easy. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Derek, as, as we wrap up, I, uh, we're running out of time here, but uh, sure. everything you're providing today is just extremely beneficial. I, I can't wait for, for shops to hear about this. I appreciate you coming on, sharing everything. When I put together the uh, the show notes, I'll make sure all your contact information's in there, so these guys can reach out to you. Is there anything we missed on this that uh, that the uh, listeners need to know about? 
You know, just, just to make it super easy, I'll, I'll say two things. One is uh, anybody who wants to get, you know, have a free conversation and just find out, could we be a good candidate possibly? We could set up a 15-minute phone call. Just go to biglifefinancial.com slash MW, like mind wrench, right? MW. Okay. Uh, you can set up an appointment there. We'll talk with you and go over your options. And the other thing I can say is even if R&D isn't the right thing for you, I recently did a presentation uh, for, for auto repair shops uh, in front of hundreds of people where we went over 17 different tax strategies that most CPAs are not telling auto these, these shop owners about that you okay. could potentially use. So there's a lot more than just R&D. We'd be happy to look at and help you see if there's a, you know, any opportunities there as well. We know that if we can help you keep a lot more of the money you make, every dollar saved in taxes is the same as a new dollar earned without all the risk and employees and overhead and all the other stuff, right? So we, we really do want to help. So just biglifefinancial.com slash MW, and you can set up a call. We can talk through whatever whatever makes sense for you. Awesome. I love it. That's great. I'll put that, uh, I'll put that link in the show notes as well. And uh, I didn't tell you before, but I'm part of a, a group of uh, industry professionals that we do a monthly Zoom meeting uh, for the industry, and it's it's free to anybody to join. And it's called the Collision Cocktail Hour. So I've got five mm -hmm. co-hosts along with me. It's a blast. We have fun uh, once a month on this. People come in. We try to share uh, something useful, something uh, timely as far as, you know, things that are going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, bring in some, you know, and we'll have special guests that talk about certain aspects of this business too. So you might make a great future guest uh, on the show. So uh, yeah. I'll make sure I get you an invite to uh, to where that website is and uh, you can check it out one of these months. So, Yeah, I, I'd love it. I love a chance to just share this information. I just feel like so many business owners work so hard, take all the risk and they just don't keep enough of what they make. And, you know, if you're making good money, depending on what state that you're in, you're probably paying 40 to 50% to the government. That's a lot. We want to help. Yes minimize that legally and ethically there's a lot of stuff out there that people just don't know about so so yeah i'd yeah. love to absolutely i i'm like everybody else out there i'd like to pay the least amount of tax possible <laughs> yeah. every year so if there's something i need to do different i'm going to do it so anyways thanks again derek it's been great having you on i appreciate you working with me uh, i know the scheduling was a little tricky getting here but uh i'm glad it worked out and uh, i'm really grateful for everything you shared Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you found some valuable information in what Derek shared with us, and you're able to start trimming that tax bill by claiming your own R&D credits along your path to implementing the latest in equipment, tools, materials, and repair processes needed for today's vehicles. Remember, Derek has offered listeners to this show a free 15-minute consultation to see if your business qualifies for these tax breaks as well. Just go to www.biglifefinancial.com slash MW to set up a call now. I'll put all of Derek's contact information in the show notes, along with a link to set up your free call. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate your support, and I hope you have a great week. I can always be reached at www.ricksillover.com, where you can find all my social media links, podcast episodes, blog posts, and much more.